Alright guys, we're officially at Midsummer Scream. Here, what, like two hours early before they open? Yeah, what do they say? Uh, registration or whatever starts at 8.30, we're here about 9, so. Yeah. It's crazy. There's, the parking is fucking nuts. And what? Yeah, it looks like the line's pretty crazy too. Oh yeah. Woo! You guys don't want to see the lines for uh, for parking. So anyway. Uh, the, best, the good part though is that they didn't charge us fucking $60 to park, so. Oh yeah. It's only, it's only 15 bucks for parking. We're already here. We're gonna just relax a little bit. Uh, I just text Fonzo. Um, he said uh, Chris and Amy are on their way, like you know, 20 minutes ago. So they'll probably be there to pick them up in like two hours. Take another like three hours to get here, and then uh, yeah, they should be here by like what, like 3 p.m. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're gonna check this place out and uh, wait for them to get here. So let's do this. Rana, check out that line though. Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, we're about to Thousands go wait. Thousand fucking not bloody corpses. Yeah. All right. Well, fuck it. Let's go get in line. Oh, it's a small Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Unique vintage. All right, guys. We're sneaking around the corner. Oh, oh. Who's that? What's the plan? What's the plan? Where, where's Scott? Give me the map, Scott! <laughs> <laughs> He's already inside somewhere. What's up, Raina? Raina's house. She's still scared. Oh, you alright there, well, Amy? Right? We've already had ourselves a midsummer scream. Yeah. Yeah. Had, that's why I first missed summer scream. We walked in the door like less than five minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Check it out. Look what they got. You see that? Oh, there's a Pennywise. There's a Pennywise sign over here. Oh, let's come here. For the, uh, the dairy uh, carnival that they're gonna have. Yeah. 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 If you guys are in the area, they're gonna have this on Hollywood Boulevard and Vine Street, August 15th and September 8th. Hey, Chris, Chris, we're entering the fog. Oh, no kidding. Hey, 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 I thought there was going to be no shade at this convention, guys. Right? This way. Someone just grabbed my bike. Breaking burgers over there. Who, who was that? <laughs> Do it again. Jump scares all day long, right? Uh, hey, hey, a haunt involving the 
movie theater. Hey guys, so, like hey, while, while we're waiting, uh, you guys want to go check out a movie? Fuck, well. Oh, wow. So let's see what they got. What they got? They got The Shining, Poltergeist, Aliens, huh? I got 13 parts. I wonder if it's in 3D. Oh, that's a good point. We'll see. Well, what you think? <laughs> also. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that's creepy. Is the children of the corn maze that right. <laughs> He wants you, Malachi. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Scooby gang right there. Oh, it's a mystery we got in, huh? Are you sure that's kind of auditions for The Walking Dead? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is full. Oh, look at those shirts, dude. Thank you. Those midsummer shirts, you see that? Yeah. I had to get one of those. Big ass ballroom. <laughs> spheres, whenever candlelights flicker and often go out, that is the time when ghosts are about. Creepies and crawlies from last Halloween awaken the spirits for Midsummer Scream. <laughs> Now summon you all, your seats to take. Our time is short, so let us begin. Yale, Claude, Mark, Walt, and all others, we invoke you. Come in. <laughs> Hinges creak in doorless chambers, and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls. Whenever candlelights flicker where the air is deathly still, that is the time when ghosts are present, practicing their terror with ghoulish delight. Do -do -do. of Walt Disney Imagineering, Tom Morris. Interior designer of the Haunted Mansion, Tanya Norris. And your host for this presentation, Doug Barnes of the Season Pass Podcast. Right. It's summer... 
you guys all in line for the Haunted Mansion right now? Oh my gosh, this is a lot of people. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for being here mid-summer stream. How many are you excited about this weekend? Right, the best weekend of Halloween is right now. All right, so we are going to celebrate this little ride of celebrating 50 years right down the street, known as the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. You know, I've always looked at this as never just a ride, but this is actually a life experience and it's something that sticks with you forever, right? So a part of your life really does, you know, Haunted Mansion is part of it throughout your life. So everything that you look at in theme parks and just themed entertainment in general, you usually end up judging it by the Haunted Mansion. So, um, so very happy to be here with you guys. Uh, this, is, this, is a, uh, this is a nice panel that we got stacked up right here, right? All right, so uh, let's vehicles, go. you can't have a collision, so you don't need an anti-collision system. Okay, we got that one done. If the vehicles are following one another fairly closely, you're going to have a pretty good uh, theoretical ride capacity. Well, these uh, two vehicles that I'm talking about, one rode sideways and one uh, followed the vehicle in front. So all you saw was the back of the hair of the people in front. Well, that's not fun. So I was sitting talking to John Hench, and he happened to have a candied apple sitting on his desk, and I just absolutely picked it up and twirled it, and I says, John, we could make a chain of vehicles that runs on a track, but instead of putting the body on the vehicle rigidly, I could put it where I could turn it, and I could uh, lean forward and lean back, and this would give the art directors and the storytellers a chance to direct the audience into each scene. And it will also save you time, as you turn from one scene to the other, you can turn uh, quickly and uh, have less time loss in the segue between scenes. And that, it was such a simple thing, and I said, John, we're going to move a bunch of people, and we just move them in all different directions. And I was a pilot at the time, and there was a, uh, a thing called navigational aid called Omni Range. I said, John, this is the, the Omni Mover. So you got to watch out what you call your first sketch, because your name got stuck, and then we never got a chance to give it a proper name. So I'm sorry. <laughs> But that's how I developed. Uh, the writers uh, on, uh, if you remember, the Haunted Mansion was going to be a, a rolly crump, scary walkthrough, and you can't control people when you, when you go from a sequence of one thing to another. And as they saw us developing the um, uh, the Omnimover at 1401 Flower in the back, we had a little test track. They said, "Oh my gosh, that solves our walk around problem." So bang, the Haunted Mansion would have been sitting there kind of dormant for years, figuring out how to do it. They said, "We got it. We got the answer." So the Haunted Mansion changed and went a whole new direction of the idea that you have directed scenes, you have all the gags that you want to do, and since the track had already been uh, going to prove itself out very well, the Doom Buggies came to life. There you go. And that's what it's like before. That's what so, yeah. I think so, yeah. My name is the King of Haunted Mansion. And we started working on it, and... Um, I, we were both from animation. I had come out of, uh, had finished uh, Beauty and the Beast, Emperor's New Groove, and some of those films, and he had done Stuart Little, and we we started by going over to Imagineering and going through the library and talking to anybody that we could talk to who had worked on it and looking at the, the, the uh, kind of mythology behind it, the storytelling behind it. And then the coolest thing that I possibly have ever done in my life at Disney is we went to the park at about six o'clock one morning and turned the lights on in the attraction and walked through it. And it was amazing and kind of humbling because it is, you know, for me anyway, it was kind of a humble setting. It's you look behind the scenes and it's plywood and it's blacklight paint and it's things that, you know, to the eye might look um, very common. But then you turn the lights off and it's the coolest thing ever. So like the stage right behind us. It was just the amazing kind of uh, theater of it all. Um, so we hired a great production designer, John Meyer, who actually recently just did the production design on uh, Mary Poppins Returns. Huge fan of Disney, and um, we built the whole mansion. We thought we can't really do this in an existing mansion, so we built it in sound stages. So everything on the screen in that film is on sound stages, except for the exterior, which we built on a ranch out in uh, Santa Clarita. So if you live out in the Santa Clarita Valley, uh, the Haunted Mansion lives out there too, or lived out there. So uh, then we spent three months with Eddie Murphy, which is a topic for a whole other discussion, and, uh, and had a good time making the movie. There you go. So obviously it's such an important piece of Disney's history because they wanted to make a movie off that like they did with Pirates of the Caribbean. One was absolutely amazing. 
And then, yeah, you had a great job on Haunted Mansion. Then. <laughs> you guys, make sure if you're at the gala tonight to, to be there uh, tonight, because I uh, it should be a ton it's of fun. so much to talk about. Um, yeah, it was intimidating too because uh, Pirates of the Caribbean with Johnny Depp came out right before Haunted Mansion, and Eddie Murphy's last movie was Pluto Nash, which was a great movie. Um, but it, well, it really, you should see it. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, we did the best we could, and everybody strives incredibly hard to make these movies, and uh, we had people like the Rick Baker, who's an amazing, amazing actor. Woo! Um, so part of the fun for me was just hanging out with people like Rick and, uh, and, and you know, sorry, composer and some of our special effects guys, just to be able to kind of find out how they approach their stagecraft to turn it into this film. So it was a great experience in the end. Awesome. I just want to say those sets were incredible. <laughs> I'm sure I already said, I like that, I need walking water. And uh, I was very fortunate to help uh, go antique shopping with Lily and uh, uh, Diane. I did the interiors, or helped Diane and Ron when they bought the, uh, uh, their ranch out in, in the valley. And uh, then Bob and Sharon, I would help them, and I took Lily and uh, ant uh, excuse me, Edna antique shopping, who had a great sense of humor, a sweet lady. And uh, it was a really, a very wonderful time. At the same time, when I see people saying, well, I did this and I did that, and all these names and things, we did it as a team. And our mantra was to have detail and authenticity. Those were what we lived by and research. Kids are raising hell, huh? Ha, 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 ha. 
just got a little rocky. Oh, oh what a bump shot? Oh. It's a real horror show up in here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> With all these lines. Oh. officially back home now it's time for the uh, haul portion of this video I'm uh, gonna show you guys all the cool stuff I bought and uh, some freebies as well and uh, Raina came down for this show and she also brought uh, some gifts for me including this freaking check check out the leprechaun shirt that's fucking awesome right it's one of my favorites so freaking underrated so Raina thank you uh, I'm about to show you guys all the stuff I got and I'll show you the rest of the gifts uh, she got for me and uh, yeah Let's get to it. And uh, the first couple of freebies that I got at Midsummer Scream, they were giving away these uh, scary stories to tell in the dark posters. And as you guys can see now, whoop, if uh, my camera can focus. Yep, yeah, that looks pretty creepy. <laughs> and uh, they were also giving away these uh, Evil Dead 2 uh, posters, which is basically like supposed to be a page out of the, uh, the Necronomicon as, as you guys can see here. Evil Dead 2 uh, has always been my favorite in the uh, Evil Dead trilogy and so I mean I know the squad are huge fans of it too so uh, yeah I, I actually ended up Reyna and I actually ended up uh, picking uh, one of these like for for uh, every one of us like, you know one for each uh, squad member so uh, yeah and I actually have an extra one, so there's one in back of this one which is identical. So uh, yeah, I have an extra one, but uh, but don't you know? Don't tell anyone. 
Next up, we have Hochi Zombie uh, comic book here. As you guys can see. And, I mean, honestly, that's a rough one. I don't know who will win. Ape versus Zombie. What do you guys think? It's kind of like putting King Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, wait, that is happening next year. Well, I mean, it already happened technically. It's a remake, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> Moving on. You have uh, Beyond the Gates. Uh, I admittedly have not gotten a chance to see this yet, but uh, I know Fonzo recommended it uh, very highly, so uh, of course I trust his opinion. And yeah, so I decided, what the hell, I'll, uh, I'll snag the poster just to have it, you know, in case I... I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll end up loving the movie regardless, but yeah, we shall see. Here is one item I picked up that I'm super excited about. I had always heard uh, mixed reviews on this one before actually watching it myself. As always, you can't trust anybody's opinion but your own, so I did exactly that. And uh, thanks to my buddy Oz, I was able to watch it uh, a while back. And um, yeah, I freaking loved it. And I had to pick up uh, a Blu-ray. You got a free freaking, look at this poster. You got a free poster with uh, a purchase of a Blu-ray or DVD. And yeah, this film was everything. I was hoping it would be. It's perfectly gory. Like, I mean, anybody that has a problem with it, they probably can't stand like a little, you know, like, mm, I wouldn't say a little blood, a lot of blood, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, actually, it's funny. We had uh, a chance to have uh, David Howard Thornton on our podcast uh, that I co-host uh, with my buddy Oz. And uh, yeah, feel free to check us out on Facebook, Postmortem Radio. Give us a like. Uh, if you guys want to listen to the episode, feel free to do so. You know, <clears throat> shameless plug. But uh, that's enough of that. <laughs> so yeah, I had to pick up uh, the Blu-ray and the freaking poster. And I'm, I'm super excited uh, to watch it again. I can't wait for the freaking sequel. And, you know, it, it can't come fast enough. That's all I can say. Alright, guys. Uh, first up for this one. Reyna was freaking awesome enough to... Uh, gift me uh, she found don't open till christmas one of my favorite uh christmas horror films and um this one actually doesn't involve uh a killer santa for once <laughs> but um in case you guys haven't seen this one it's a freaking great one it's a lot of fun uh she picked it up for me it was for uh they had it for 13 bucks i just look look at this like it's still wrapped up and everything like and what i love it has a little uh, horror you know from like the retro uh video store days so um yeah she picked this up for me and we uh her and i checked out the uh, texas chainsaw museum and as you guys can read here they had all kinds of like props and stuff to take pictures with but not only that look check this out they have like all this cool information right here and they actually had uh you know like they have like the shooting script right there as you guys can see and um, they actually had a lot of items for sale. So these were uh, the prices. They had like grandpa, uh, life-size posable grandpa with rocking chair. Uh, they actually had the table from the original Texas Chainsaw, which was like amazing. That was freaking crazy for me to, to see that. And as you guys can see, look at, look at all that stuff they had for sale. So I decided to take this um, little thing, which is freaking cool. It's the House of Salem. Uh, if you guys want to check this out, you know, you can feel free to Google it online. If you guys live in the area, definitely check it out in person. And uh, yeah, some of uh, the other items I picked up. And last but not least for the uh, items I picked up at Midsummer Screen, this Midsummer Screen 2019 uh, tote bag. They were handing these out, which I thought was super cool, because not a lot of conventions these days, like, just give, like, bags out like this anymore, really. Um, yeah, it's, it's becoming pretty rare, so just the fact that they even did this, like, for the fans is pretty freaking awesome. So, got a little uh, souvenir from Midsummer Scream, my first Midsummer Scream, which is awesome. Alright, guys, first up for uh, the gifts that Reina got me this past weekend, check this out. Freaking Toy Story t-shirt. How freaking, like, how awesome is that? I know it's not horror, but 
Look at the way it's presented. Like, it looks like it's straight up, like, Tales from the Crypt, like, creep show, you know, like, comic book. It's freaking awesome. You got Zerg, you got Buzz. Like, uh, what? Like, what? Look, right here. Boom. Toy Story. <laughs> I freaking love this. Reyna, thank you so much. Like, and here's another, um, here's another, uh, little fandom I have. Pet Cemetery. I don't know how you guys feel about this one, but I personally think it's a lot of fun. I'm not sure about the the reboot. It was okay, but <clears throat> you know, I thought they could have taken a few more. Um, they could have taken a few more liberties with it, I guess. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, and I mean, yeah. Everybody who knows me knows I'm a freaking huge Star Wars nerd. So there you go. These three, along with the. Uh, the leprechaun shirt I already showed you guys. Uh, so she got me like four shirts in total. Freaking awesome. Thank you. And some DVDs Reyna picked up for me. She knows uh, I needed Leprechaun Returns to complete my Leprechaun collection. Because, uh, yeah, I freaking love this series. And, you know, a lot of people complained about this one just because, you know, it wasn't Warwick Davis coming back to the role. But... Honestly, I didn't care. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to give this guy a fair shot. I thought he knocked it out of the park. You know, he uh, his mannerisms were very much like uh, Warwick Davis. So, yeah, I'm not going to give him crap for that. And the movie was, you know, it was silly at times. But for the most part, I, I can say I enjoyed this freaking sequel. It was fun. You know, regardless of uh, what you guys may think, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. And, uh, yeah. Reyna knows I'm a huge Planet of the Apes uh, fan not just of you know the new ones but the the original films as well uh, and yeah <laughs> she picked this up for me like look, look at it comes with all the original ones so that's pretty freaking cool I guess you could say it is a madhouse look <laughs> and this one kind of tripped me out because I've been looking for this freaking film forever it's one of my childhood favorites and I'm, I'm one of those guys that enjoys hunting for you know movies uh, I don't like I don't really care for purchasing movies online I like to actually go out and look for them I don't know maybe I'm I'm just you know I don't know call it nostalgia or you know retro or whatever or old school like that or whatever but yeah I'm one of those and she actually found this for me uh, at her old uh, job so <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to watch this one again. It's been a couple years since I've seen it, um, but I remember loving the hell out of it. I mean, Rick Moranis, Ed O'Neill, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's freaking crazy. So, yeah, these are like three of my favorite things right here. Check that out. So, anyone that knows me knows I love wrestling, and of course, Reyna does too. So, she actually got me the uh, soundtrack to uh, Ready to Rumble starring David Arquette if you guys can see there and she knows how much I love horror pins but as I said she knows I love wrestling too so she got me a uh, Alpha Club uh, Chris Jericho and a phenomenal one AJ Styles uh, pin wrestling pins so um, yeah I guess I gotta get a, uh, a wrestling uh, vest started up now as I have a whole bunch of horror ones already but uh, yeah Check that out. And Reyna got me something that has to do with my favorite thing, eating. Except this one uh, has to do with eating brains, and this one has to do with eating cereal. But uh, yeah, you guys check this out. So, Return of the Living Dead bottle opener. I mean, I don't drink, but uh, I do drink plenty of, you know, like soda and glass bottles sometimes they come with, so I think it's pretty, uh, pretty neat. That's definitely gonna come in handy. And this Count Chocula uh, pen. I think it's an iron-on. Yeah, it's an iron-on. And, uh, I mean, Count Chocolate has always been my favorite of the, you know, those three cereals. And Raina knows that, so she got one. She actually got one for herself, too, because it's her favorite as well. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty freaking cool. So check this out, guys. I have never read a Life magazine uh, my entire life. But... This is probably the first issue that actually uh, has my full interest because Reyna tells me apparently this is cover to cover 
about Godzilla. Look at So that's pretty freaking sweet. Has uh, I'm pretty sure it has some cool stuff to read in here. Look at it. artwork. Check it out where we got. Let's see. Go. Let's see, uh, 1999 Matthew uh, Broderick one. Not so uh, loved, but yeah. Godzilla goes to Hollywood. Let's see. Oh, look at, oh, there we go. So, yeah, this is, uh, holy crap. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Boom. That's the uh, reboot uh, I've been waiting for. Pretty much my entire life, and it's finally happening next year. So, pretty freaking happy about that. Pretty happy about this issue. Like, Reyna, you damn man, thank you. This is crazy. And this was a uh, horror convention, technically. And you guys know, I always try to hoard up on autographs. And one important name that I could not pass up was Bob Gurr. If you guys don't know the name, you guys uh, probably should if you guys are fans of the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland because he is uh, the Imagineer behind uh, the Doom Buggies for the Haunted Mansion ride and uh, he gave a very insightful uh, you know look um, during the uh, the panel the 50th anniversary panel uh, basically like his idea how he came up with it and um, you know how it would, it would be a better experience uh, experience than the Haunted Mansion just being a walkthrough, which was uh, the original idea for it. But, had him sign my book, and I got pretty freaking happy because he actually was surprised uh, when I showed him this, and he said this is actually the first one of these that he's ever signed for anybody. So, that was pretty cool. And if you guys haven't uh, read this book, I'll give you guys a little glimpse. It's essentially uh, pretty much just you know concept art and talks about you know, as you guys can see there pretty much this talks about like the history of the ride and um, how how it was made and stuff like that so check that out Look, boom. and uh, yeah just give you guys a quick quick glimpse all of that you guys are familiar with that if you've been to the Haunted Mansion right? but um yeah so pretty much uh, he freaking loved it, so of course he didn't mind signing it. Uh, it was a freaking honor to meet him. Uh, if you guys are interested in this book, I mean, you can pretty much pick one. I'm pretty sure you can pick them up at Disneyland. I'm pretty sure they have these, but uh, if you you know don't want to pay to get into Disneyland, they do have them. I picked this one up uh, myself at Burbank, California, at uh, Halloween Town. We got plenty of uh, plenty of these in stock, uh, as well as other Haunted Mansion uh, related books. If you guys uh, or ever in the area want to pick one up, feel free to do so. And last but definitely not least, my uh, Never Sleep Again, the Elm Street Legacy poster. Got a few more extra signatures on it. Just needed two more to complete my uh, Dream Warriors collection. So, you guys can see there, that's Bradley Gray, who played, uh, played Philip. He wrote Welcome to the Snake Pit. And I needed Ira as well. He played Will, aka the Wizard Master, hence why I had him write that. And with that, I officially have uh, all the Dream Warriors. As you guys can see here, here's Terran, and let's see, oh, there goes Penelope signature. She wrote, I can't handle the nightmare. And we have Kincaid, Joey. And of course, Nancy's up there. So yeah, still looking. Uh, you know, I'm always on the lookout to add more uh, more signatures, obviously. But this is, uh, I gotta say, this is looking pretty freaking great so far. Okay, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. That's gonna wrap up this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. For those of you that haven't gotten a chance to check out Midsummer Scream, it was my first year attending. I had a freaking blast with the with the squad. Uh, we had a great time, you know, just act, being ourselves, acting dumb. So, yeah, uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, definitely uh, feel free to do so next year. 
Um, hope this video was helpful, you know. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's going to do it. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.